Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I created a medieval castle diorama from scratch. For this project, I got inspired by the German castle named Elts. It's a fascinating tall castle that looks like it's from a fantasy movie, so I wanted to create something similar. I started by making the first building. I cut the shape for it from a bigger piece of XPS blue foam, and I shaped the roof with a tape knife. To make some parts of the building stand out from the structure, I trim it a little bit again with a foam cutter. After a while, I decided that the building looked too short, so I made another block and glued it to the bottom using super glue. Then I carved some ornaments using sculpting tools, and I started making little tower. To place it on top of the roof, I simply carved some space for it. Then, I covered in acrylic paint both the part of the roof and the tower, so the superglue would not melt the foam. I repeated the process for all three of them, and then I made a bay window that I will place on the bottom of the building. When I carved all the holes for the windows, I scrubbed the surface of the foam to make it more rough, and then I made horizontal lines that would imitate the look of the stone wall. Then I covered the roof area with primer, and I painted all the window carvings in pure black. When that was ready, I started gluing the bay window and the towers. I fill the empty cracks with air-dried clay, and I find the space to make one more window. Then, I covered the entire front surface of the building in beige brown, as well as the towers and spires. Covering in white was kind of hard because the foam was blue, so I needed to apply a few layers. When it was completely dry, I applied a brown wash from Vallejo and set it aside until it dried. Meanwhile, I started making the roof. As an experiment, I chose a thin gray board, and I cut vertical and horizontal lines on it to imitate the tiles. Then I cut the shapes out of it and covered it in dark blue. When it dried, I applied a black wash to it and set it aside to dry. Then I prepared the framing for the windows. I cut along planks from the bigger sheet of 1.5mm balsa wood and covered it in light orsha. But before I started to stick it, I had to finish the wall, so when the wash dried, I applied a small amount of light brown to it. The Vallejo washes after they dry. They make the surface very shiny, and I didn't like that effect, so I tried to apply a matte varnish to it, and to some degree it worked out. After the varnish dried, I started to cut to size and glue all the framework around the windows. This is a part where I like it less, because it takes so much time and attention to glue all those tiny elements. But that finally comes to an end, and the next step was to cover the spires because raw foam just looks bad. So I used the same method as before, and when I made all of them, I started to glue them, and at this point I noticed that it didn't look good as well. The paint was chipping away from the cardboard, and it started to bend when I tried to glue it. Also, pieces looked unaligned, so I knew that later I needed to fix them, but I continued until all the roof was finished. In the empty spaces on the sides and on the top, I placed wood planks to cover the cracks from being visible. Then, when it was completed, I needed to fix the spires, so I covered them all in clay and waited one day until the clay was hard. Then I grinded it with a knife until it was straight and smooth, and then I applied paint to it. The first building was officially ready, so I began the construction of the second building, which will be on the right side. The process was more or less the same, so we're going to speed things up a bit. When I carved the holes for the windows, it made the surface inside really rough, so with the help of a ballpoint sculpting tool, I kneaded it a little bit. In this building, I decided to make a different surface, because I was curious how it would look, so I made bricks a lot bigger. Also, I decided to make some windows on the roof. I tried at the start to make a similar color as the previous building, but I operated with a few colors, and to make one color, I typically blend four or more colors together, so it was impossible to recreate it identically. This one came out a little bit more reddish than the previous one, but that's not a problem. The original Elts Castle also looks like that because it was built and repaired during the period of nine or so centuries, so it is typical for castles to have different colors of bricks. Also, this time I wanted to test different materials for a roof, and here I used wood. I trimmed it into pieces, so the holes in the foam would be visible. Here, 
Here, I also used a matte varnish, but those matte varnishes from Vallejo don't really make it look matte. I tested it on various colors, and every time I used it, the surface was more shiny than before. Here, I made half of the building in the style of timber framed, which I really like. I didn't paint the bottom part of the building, because later I will glue another building there. At the end, I made a big door and window framework, and I glued the building to the first one. So then I started construction of the third building. I didn't want it to be in a straight line, so I set my foam cutting machine to work at some light angle, and I cut one wall this way. Then I worked on the shape, and using a pencil, I drew vertical and horizontal lines, and this really helped me to cut it properly. In this building, I made the windows way bigger because I wanted to put framing inside them because I thought it would look better. With the knife, I made some carvings and imperfections on the edge of the building. To cover bumps in the roof, I used air-dried clay. Then I covered once again the surface, but this time with less watered down paint. From now on, I was using wood for the roof because it looked better than a board. When I covered the walls with black wash, I always do one wall at a time and place it up for drying. If it were on the side or upside down, the wash would flow with gravity and leave stains. To match with the building on the left, I needed to trim the roof a little bit. Here also, the wood pieces didn't want it to match, and they left cracks between the connections, so I decided to cover it with clay. When it dried, I trimmed it and smoothed the surface with sandpaper. Then I corrected the ornaments a little bit because when they had dried paint on them, it was easier to cut them. I did the same for the windows, and after that, I only cut the shape of the windows after they got paint on them. At this stage, I go back to the first building and apply the newly discovered technique to previous spears. As I thought, framing windows inside the holes gave them a better look, but it was much harder to do. After all the framing was done, I painted the edges of the pieces that I needed to cut. Then I glued the building to the two previous buildings, and I began the works on the little building that I will later connect to the second building. It will have a large entrance for carts and horses. Then I started making a stone structure that will be a patio for the two buildings. I tried to carve the rock surface, but later in the video I will show you a much better way of doing it. I also made two pavements and glued a rampart for connecting two pieces together and to mask the connection crack. I used thick dry paint from Citadel because I don't really use it, and I thought that it may work for this because it's very dense. Here you see me mixing the colors. I use mainly the Vallejo model and game color. I like them because it's easy to pour them from the bottle right into the palette.
For the top of it, I mixed some 2mm length grass, made from 3 shades of green. I applied PVE glue to the spot, and with the static grass applicator, I poured some grass. I will glue the finished piece to the building later. Now it is time to make the fifth building. This one will have an irregular shape, so I connected two pieces of foam together. The sticking out part will be a timber frame part of the building in the style of jettying, which occurs when the upper floor takes more space than the previous floor and was often used in medieval times. Although it wasn't in my castle reference pictures, I used it anyway because I think it looks really cool. Also in this building, I used another technique for the wallstone structure. Firstly, I make outlines with a hook-shaped sculpting tool, and then I used a ballpoint tool on existing lines to make them pop up more. And I think it gives the best look, so I continued with this style for the rest of the buildings. Yes, this building will also have a different color. It will be more like a green, old, wet stone with a pinch of forest moss. Here you can see that the paint in the corner didn't dry, and it mixed with my wash, so I needed to wait a little longer, and in the meantime, I colored the wood. I made a lot of planks, so I have enough for the rest of the castle. On this building, I used dry brushing with Citadel dry paint, and noticed it was too white and bright, so I added another layer of wash consisting of water and black and brown paints to darken it a little bit. I bought some tip replacements for my super glue, and they were very helpful because each day after finishing work, glue was hardening in the tip, and I needed to cut it by a little bit to the point where the tip became too wide and too big for gluing small elements. So after the building was done, I applied glue to all the sides and stuck them together. I also glued the little building that I made earlier. After that, I began the construction of another building. I made a long roof, and I cut the shape on it for the tower that I made next. To make a cylinder shape, I simply cut it from a rectangle shape. For the cone, I again used air-dried clay. After gluing the tower, I also made an extension building to fill the extra space. Then I filled holes in the roof with clay, and I began the construction of the base. I covered the top of a thick foam block with paint, and I spread super glue on it. Then I covered it with another 2cm thick foam board. The top layer will be battlements, and the lower part will be rock structures. As you see here, I used various tools to cut through that foam. It was a long but satisfying process. And messy. Aww. For the rock surface, I used a method that I saw in one of the videos on the channel Small World Workshop. I made horizontal and vertical cuts across the foam using a sharp knife. And then, using my fingers and a brush, I scraped some of the loose foam. 
the bent foam that was left over from this process I removed using tweezers. The last step was just to form a ball from aluminum foil and apply some structure by pressing it hard on the foam. Then on top, I used a brush to get rid of that flat surface. And then I just drew stone pavement using a sculpting ballpoint tool. I made a road down from the battlements, but it ends up being very rough, so I apply some air dry clay to it, and on it, I also draw stone pavement. After that, I poured some water on it to soften the edges a little bit. After that was done, I drew some stones on the wall, but later discovered that using a knife works better because it makes those deep cuts inside the foam. Then I expanded those cuts using a hook sculpting tool, and I also pressed down the aluminum ball on it to make it uneven. And with the help of tweezers, I removed a few stones to make it look more realistic. Then I made two towers for the back of the castle. Then, I continued to make a stone wall and build another tower on the front. Originally, I planned to make more small buildings on the battlements, but there was no space. When I got easy access to most parts of the base, I started to pouring some base coat paint. After all the needed elements were glued, I began the work of trimming and filling the gaps and connections with air-dried clay. When the castle walls were covered in paint, I started mixing paint to cover the base. This was a never-ending story, and I believe I used a few bottles of brown and black in the process. I let it dry overnight, and the next day I noticed that I forgot about the rear gate. I also covered in the same color a stone that was connected to the building, because it had to match the base rock color. After that, I started highlighting the pavement and castle walls with a gray color. I believe I applied three layers or more because the dark base color was sucking up all the color. The final result came out very dark and cold, so I made some brown wash and applied it in hopes of giving it a brighter brown color. When it was drying, I started to highlight the stone base with a large variety of brown-gray colors. Then I splash it with a thinned down white and apply a slightly diluted green and yellowish brown color. After it dried, I applied some yellow green stains. On top of it, I created a bright blue green color for the final layer. I have also done the same for the rock formation that was stuck to the castle. I also noticed some holes in the roof, so I poured some clay there. On the main gate door, I made some small roof, and I noticed that the buildings don't have any doors, so I made some as well. For the road at the back of the castle, I poured some Mod Podge glue, and on it, I sprinkled brown pigment as well as some tiny rocks, then I mixed it all together. Then I repainted all the roofs a slightly darker color, because I painted them separately, and there were differences in color, and I also made some tests with matte varnish, so I covered it all once again. The first building really stood out from the rest, so I decided to glaze it with a dark wash to darken its colors a little bit. Then I made a wooden gate for the back and started applying PVE glue to the top of the rock formation. Then, using the static grass applicator, I poured two millimeters length of static grass on it. I have done it in sections to prevent the glue from drying out. 
After a couple of hours, I applied a second layer of glue to it to make the grass taller in some spots. But off camera, the static grass applicator kicked me. It happened when I was cleaning the metal tip from glue, and I'm pretty sure it was turned off, so that's really weird. But this is not the first time I've been kicked by those toys. Then I tried to apply the second layer of grass but discovered that the applicator didn't work, so I charged it and tried again, but the applicator was dead and broken. So I returned this one, and I grabbed the castle to make some improvements because the left side of the castle looks really boring compared to the right side. Firstly, I covered the cracks between the buildings with clay, and decided to make a passage from the tower to the building on the left. Also, I made an additional bay window. Then I made the surface of the timber-framed wall building more rough because it was too straight. My new static grass applicator finally arrived, so I wore gloves, took off the ring this time, and applied glue just to certain spots to give the surface a feeling that it's not consistent and flat. Then I spanked the base a little bit because it was knotty, and I glued the castle. After that, I connected the walls to the castle and filled all the gaps with clay. At the start, I was just experimenting with glues and bushes. I mixed pigment fixer with some foliage and applied it to the surface. As well, I did the same with the turf and applied it to the walls and rocks to create this moss effect. For the trees, I cut some branches of the bigger trees I got, dipped them in PVE glue, and then I dipped them again in the mix of bush foliage, moss turf, and pigment fixer. This way, I made a few first trees, and each next one was prettier than the last one. In the areas that looked boring, I applied a mix of foliage and turf to the grass to make bushes. And there it is. to thank my first 200 subscribers. I guarantee you guys that there will be much more content coming out on the channel in the next few months and years. Also, if you want to support the channel a little bit more, I created a Patreon page where you can become a member, and you will get some nice perks like getting access to work in progress photos and updates, your name in the credits in every video, and being able to vote on what to create next. I left a link in the description for you guys. Thank you, and see you in the next video.